So welcome to my YouTube channel, that's what we call The Good Life. Today I'm going to be harvesting some of my crops. It's the month of August and there's a bountiful amount of crops. It's got to be one of the most exciting months of the year. So I'm going to take you around as I'm harvesting and I'm going to be talking about some of the things you can do with some of your gluts of fruit and vegetables. So let's start off here with the tomatoes. I've already started picking a few off already. I think this is the most I've had all in one go. So I'm going to pick off all the ones that are ripe or nearly ripe. Um, and I'm going to be looking at some ideas of what to do with them to use them over the coming week. Now one of my favourite things to do, I mean obviously it's really lovely just to eat them as they are with salads um, and cooking them, you know, just normal cooked fried tomatoes and that sort of thing. Um, but something that I do an awful lot of, especially when I've got a glut like this, I make a great big tray of passata. So I, I make a great big batch up and I freeze it in little trays and then I use it over the coming months. And quite often I make enough passata to last me into the new year. And sometimes by the time I'm starting to get the next lot of tomatoes, if I have a particularly good year. And um, you can just freeze tomatoes if you want to. So you can just freeze bagfuls of tomatoes. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. But the problem you have when you freeze bags of some tomatoes is unless you've got a massive freezer or several freezers, it does take up an awful lot of room. So the good thing about cooking it down into a passate then means you've got the base for lots and lots of different dishes, which has got to be a really good thing. So you're already one step ahead whenever you're going to make something. And it also saves you a lot of money and also your home um, made passata is far far better than anything you can get in the shops it's absolutely delicious I do it every single year um, I have got a video on that so there will be one up on the screen and there will be one in the description if you want to watch that video but it is absolutely fantastic and a definite staple in my house I'm just going to get the last of these ones off so we've got some lettuces down here which they are Coz and Romaine. They aren't, obviously they've not hearted up yet, but I have started to um, just take some of the outer leaves off. So obviously if I wait for them all to heart up, you can guarantee they'll all heart up at once. Um, so I've just started harvesting them already. So just the odd leaves off the outside, and as you can see, they are starting to form parts already. So I'm not gonna pull one of those today because I've not hearted up. And like I said, I am just taking them off as I need them. I've got some peppers on there, but they're not far enough on for me to harvest them yet. Again, a pepper, when I've got quite a lot of peppers, you can just chop them and freeze them. Um, they, it works really, really well to put them in casseroles, stews, stir fries, that sort of thing. My aubergines are almost ready to harvest, but not quite, so I'm gonna leave those on for today. So, and the chard, this is definitely ready. And you can just use this in just so, so many dishes. Um, stir fries, salads, you name it. It's, I grow this and I, every year I think I use it more and more because it grows all throughout the winter and into the spring and it's just so incredibly um, versatile. So while I don't freeze it, or I don't need to because that will be there until the spring, so that will just sit in the garden and it's something that you don't have to, you just need to keep cutting it and more leaves will come. I just wanted to show you my cucumbers just very briefly. Mainly for the fact that although this is a harvesting video, I've harvested quite a lot of my cucumbers already a couple of days ago. But if you look at the cucumbers, they look really shabby and you'd think, oh, I it, they're finished. I'm going to get rid of them. But there's new shoots on there and I've got more cucumbers coming. So it would be really easy to look at the plant and think, oh, that's finished. I'm not going to get any more. But I'm getting new shoots coming off and I'm still getting lots of cucumbers off the new shoots. So what I will say is don't be so hasty to get rid of your cucumber plants because quite often they can keep producing more. Now we're going to head up at the allotment and I'm going to show you what I'm harvesting up there. So we're now up at the allotment. As you can see, I've harvested a fair few French beans and I've started harvesting my runner beans. Um, as you can see, the plants look quite tired um, and the temptation is, again, like with the cucumbers, just to give up with them um, or let them sow seed. You know, let the, the pods fill out a little bit more, but they really can still carry on producing for quite a while. Um, if you wanted to produce um, like leave some to produce like the beans for next year I would just leave certain canes you know I would you know so you could just leave like the first two or the first four or the first six or something 
and you could do that but personally i just carry on and let and keep watering them keep looking after them um, and still keep harvesting the beans you won't get as many but you'll still get a steady supply and it's still worth having with regards to preserving although you can make some lovely chutneys and things like that and casseroles and things they do freeze really really easily especially french beans i don't blanch them i chop them up and i prepare them as if i was going to cook them but i just don't cook them and i pop them in a freezer bag and i use the zip the kind of like the sealy bag i'll put a picture up on the screen just so you can get an idea of what i do the reason i use those is i can lay them flat in my freezer and it means I can get a heck of a lot more in there as well. And I do that for if I'm going to freeze awful lots of some other things like berries and a few other things, I'll do exactly the same. I use those little flat bags because I can just fit so much more in my freezer. So I've got um, one of my um, patty pans there that I've harvested. And um, let's go and have a look and see what other courgettes I've got. So let's have a quick wander over. So obviously anyone who's got these knows that they come thick and fast. This wasn't that big one I came up here the other day and not only has that almost turned into a marrow but I've also got another decent size of courgettes here. Um, courgettes, you can just dice courgettes and put them in the freezer if you want to. That is a very viable option, just like you do with the beans. I don't freeze that many um, just because you get such a continuous supply of them but I will freeze a few. The other option is, is to actually cook dishes that are ready to eat, you know, do some curries and some casseroles and, and things like that. So I think the rest are small enough to stay on there. And um, the other thing you can do is get a dehydrator, and I dehydrate an awful lot of my things. Um, you can make courgette crisps with... Um, with courgettes um, I will put a link up on the screen and one in the description if you want to get a dehydrator I use my dehydrator for all sorts of things from herbs to sliced courgettes to sliced apples I put chilies in there I've put berries in there all sorts of weird and wonderful things it's really quite a handy kit to have and um, I did a lot of research when I got mine um, and that one was really really reasonable and um, for the for the amount of you can actually dehydrate in it as well I have to tell you I do make a little bit of money out of it if you do make a purchase and um, but the option is yours if you'd like to take a look at that so as we wander down let's see what else we've got to harvest we really do have quite a lot i've got a basket but i've got bags so i'm going to need more than this so my cape gooseberries well i've got loads of little lanterns on there they're not filling out quite enough but there's lots and lots of promise on there so hopefully they'll start to fill out my cabbages as cabbages do they've all come on at once so i'm going to take one today you just keep an eye on them when cabbages start to part up you really do have to keep an eye on them because they can split and when they split that's when they ruin so obviously i will pick the firmest ones first which which is what i'm going to do today if i can get in and that looks like quite a firm one so i'm just going to twist it out take that home with me you know cabbage sometimes can be considered a little bit boring and i myself used to dismiss cabbage quite a bit but actually there's quite a lot you can do with it if you do a little bit of googling obviously you can just use it in a traditional way when you have a roast dinner you can put it in casseroles and stews i actually found a really nice curried recipe and of course you can make kimchi and sauerkraut so there really are quite a few things out there if you want to get a little bit creative with cabbage so it's not quite as boring as you think it is if you do a little bit of googling so i urge you to get googling with cabbage and make it a little bit more exciting so i've got plenty of kale i don't preserve that because it just keeps coming right through to the spring so I just use it as and when I need it so I've got the broccoli and again with the broccoli if you've got an awful lot in one go you could freeze it we have had quite a few heads but I've just kept it in the fridge and it's kept perfectly okay and I just pick it as and when it forms a large head and I do believe I have one here today that I can take off there we go so I just I don't bother preserving this generally I just I just use it um, what I will say and I think I've said to a lot of people don't just pull them out as soon as you've taken the main head out because you, you get side shoots coming off I actually came up here the other day and just there we go I've got a load of little side shoots here just to give you an example this is why you don't just pull them up as soon as you've had the main head because they will give you a continuous supply of some mini little broccolis like that so these will stay in here pro probably until September or October time when they're too woody for me to do anything else. Um, so unless you've got somewhere, something else that you're doing with that space, I just leave mine in and I just keep on harvesting. 
and just keep on eating it. We get through it quite quickly. So preserving it isn't really an issue because it gets eaten before it gets, gets ruined, basically. So that's those bits there. So up here I've got some spring onions. I pick these very much as and when I need them. Um, I generally don't find they bolt, they just fill out a little bit more. So I'm just going to take a few just for general cooking at home, the larger ones. I've never overwintered them before, but my father-in-law has historically, he overwinters his, um, his spring onions, which, yeah, it's, it's an option, but I'll probably use my few and I've got some more to put out. As we head over, we've got beetroot. Now, beetroot is one of those things that a lot of people pickle. Some people absolutely adore it. Some people hate it. And pickling is absolutely fine. But if I'm really honest, I don't pickle, pickle an awful lot of mine. There are so many other things you can do with beetroot. I pick it when they get quite big. So I pick bigger ones first. Anyone who follows my channel will know this already. I pick the bigger ones first because it lets the smaller ones fill out a bit more. So I've kind of got a continuous supply. One of my favorite things at the moment is I'm actually making juice. I haven't got a juicer, but what I've been doing is I've been juicing one beetroot, one carrot, one apple, with, um, I grate it, I put it in my Nutribullet, I then mix it with um, 500 ml of water when I blitz it in my Nutribullet, I then put it through a sieve and add a teaspoon or two of cider vinegar and it makes a very, very delicious beetroot juice and very nutritious too and all for your own produce. There's so many other things you can do with beetroot. I made beetroot curry last year, which I'm sure I'll do again. You can make beetroot brownies, you can roast it. Uh, there really are some hummus. I've made beetroot and cumin hummus. So although pickling is a very, very viable option, there's so many other things. And again, you could use the dehydrator and make some beetroot crisps. You could make a mixture of beetroot crisps, courgette crisps, potato crisps, carrot crisps, all sorts of things, you know? But yeah, don't let me put you off actually pickling it if you really want to. Um, but there are so many other options out there, which I quite like the other options, if I'm really honest with you. So... So yeah, so I have made chutney with it actually. So when I've had a lot of it, I have made some chutneys and some pickles with beetroot and they have been very, very nice. So that's another option to do with your ducks as well. Here's my carrots, so. Carrots, I don't preserve. I very much dig them as I need them. So, you know, and again, there are so many other things you can do with carrots rather than just having them with your roast. I've started, you can put them in coleslaws, um, you can even mix them with a little bit of um, lime um, just to make kind of like a little salad pickle kind of thing. So I just gently loosen the ground and I just, again, same with the beetroots. I look for the bigger ones and I pull the bigger ones out. You never quite know what you're going to get. That one's a bit of an odd shaped one. So some are better than others. These are a little bit crowded. Oh, we do have some funny shaped ones, but they will taste wonderful nonetheless. Oh, and we have a purple one there. It's quite odd actually, quite often I buy the mixed varieties, but you often don't get that many of the different coloured ones, so it's really fun when you do. So yeah, they're not the biggest carrots in the world. I did pick some the other day that were a little bit bigger, so when you put them back in, just boot the soil back in. I normally put a little bit of water on them. As you can see, I've got EnviroMesh, which I think is pretty essential to protect them from the carrot, uh, carrot fly. I find it very, very effective. Oh, we do have some very stumpy looking ones here. So even me, a YouTuber, they're not, ah, oh, there we go. That's a proper carrot. This is because I'm on camera. All the odd shaped ones are coming out. Oh, another good one. There we go. I can grow a proper carrot. But you know, this is real. This is why they're a bit knobbly and bobbly, but they all taste the same. So, but yeah, definitely coleslaw is one of our favorite things to make with carrots. But again, Google it. There's all sorts of weird and wonderful things. Stir fries, you can put carrots into stir fries. There's so many more options out there. And one of the things, when you grow your own fruit and vegetables, it's very wise to get creative and make different things because otherwise you can get bored of something when you get a gut. So one of the things I've definitely done is I've had a recipe, I've done it too many times, and then I've got really bored of that vegetable. So if you vary it up a little bit, not only does it give you some really good dishes, um, it also means you don't get bored of it and you use a lot more of your own produce. So let's move around and see what else I'm harvesting. Well, I've got a few raspberries here. They're my autumn ones, and I don't know about anyone else, my autumn ones never grow as well as the main summer ones. They're often a little bit diddy, and they're just not quite as nice. But 
they are still my own grown raspberries and still very nice and obviously there's all sorts of things you can do with these you can just eat them as they are you can put them in a cake you can make jam with them They're very very nice in gin but this is something else you can pop in a dehydrator as well so i had the most enormous glut of raspberries a couple of years ago so much so that i didn't know what to do with them i also had a lot of apples and pears as well one year I think it was when I started off a little bit more and I must admit my creative skills weren't quite as good as they are now with using doing different recipes with them. So again, things like apples and pears and raspberries um, and other soft fruits, another really good thing to put in a dehydrator and then you can use them in all sorts of things. You can put them with your breakfast cereals. I think I've put them in, um, you know, flapjacks and that sort of thing. And we will put another link up on the screen for that dehydrator if you're interested. And there will be another one in the description. I think I'll come back later and pick the rest of these berries because they're a little bit hidden away. But hopefully I'll have at least a bowl full. So let's move down to the allotment. So we'll touch on potatoes only in the fact that I leave mine in the ground and I, and I dig them as I need them. So I will be digging up a few potatoes today, but I won't be digging them up until October time. And the reason I dig them up then is because the frost can affect them and you get more slugs and snails. Who would think you could get more slugs and snails? But as it gets colder and wetter, you get more slugs and snails. Although I've been eating them, and like I say, just digging two or three at a time and eating those. If we want to touch on um, squashes, I'm seeing an awful lot of people harvesting their squashes too early. Now in the UK, obviously I realise that some people watch from all different parts of the world. You're waiting for them to ripen, so they are not like courgettes. Courgettes, you pick them at the size that you want them, and you pick them regularly so you get more. Squashes, you leave them on the plant to mature, like a fruit, so they ripen. So what you want is generally for them to change colour and once the plants start to die off, so like these ones, the plants are starting to die off, at some point, and it's too early because it is only August, the stems will start to die off as well. And it's at a point when the stems start to die off that there's a good chance that your fruits might be ready as well. But as you can see, these have still got quite a bit of green on them. So I will leave them on there. Now while some people harvest them off and they ripen them on a windowsill, they will ripen far, far better outside on the plant for as long as you can leave them. Obviously, if they're not completely ripe when you need them, obviously I'll have, you have to get them in, otherwise the frost would root them out here. That being said, if you've got a squash that you think is ripe, and I've got one that isn't too far off, and I actually accidentally knocked it off the other day, but I left it out in the sun to ripen a bit more, you can take the odd one off. So if you've got one that you think is ripe now i wouldn't say that's completely right but it's as close as it's going to get you can take one off and eat it but only take them off as you need them if you think they're close to being ripe now because obviously that started off at a diff as a different color as a butternut squash and now it's turned the color that we associate with a butternut squash i can assume that that is might not be completely right but it'll probably be ripe enough for me to eat a little bit early if I'm honest I wouldn't generally start taking them off till more like September but if you really want a squash to cook with you can give one a go now and if it's nowhere near done well then you know to leave the rest on and only take them off as you can eat them but like I said I will be waiting until October now if you're looking at things that you can sow in August there is a link up on the, up on the screen and one in the description for you to see what you could be planting and sowing now <laughs> 